Today I will show you how to use form validations in Angular Dart. And this is the application I'm going to use as an example. It's a simple form with two fields, name and country. And right now there are no validations. Let's jump into the source code. And as you can see, there is not much happening here. Let's say I want to add a validation ensuring that the name field is present. I can do that by adding the ng required attribute. I notice that the field has been marked as invalid. And if we punch something in, it gets valid. We can use the ng invalid class to style our field like this. If I refresh, you'll see that the field got read right away. And it's probably not what we want. We wanted to get read only after the user has interacted with it. Thankfully, Angular adds the ng-dirty class that indicates exactly that. Let's adjust the styles. And here we go. The field got read only after I interacted with it. Let's try something more interesting with the country field. What I want to validate is that the entered country is in some predefined list. Something like this. To do that, we need to write a new directive that we can make a validator by implementing the ng-validator interface. As you can see, the interface is small and consists of two methods, name and is valid. Let's call our validator vs validate in. The validator just says true or false when given some value. The object that actually runs validations is ngModel, which I'm injecting here. What I need to do for this validator to work is to add it to this ng model. Of course, we shouldn't forget about assigning a list of valid options. And finally, is valid. That's basically everything you need to do to write a directive that acts as a validator. Let's try it in the app. This country is not in the list, so it's invalid. But if I punch in Canada, uh, the field is valid. The very last thing I want to show you today is how to disable the submit button when the form is invalid. To do that, we need to name the form. Let's say registration form. After that, we can access the form object in the current scope and read its properties. So if I print the invalid property here, we can see how it changes from true to false. Finally, we can disable the button using ng-disabled. As you can see, it works. That's it for today. And thank you for watching this screencast.